etudes for guitar. Uh, Leo Brower's Study No. 6 is one of my all-time favorites. Like many guitarists, uh, I learned it after becoming familiar with a rock song by Ozzy Osbourne that paraphrases the chord progression. And this was kind of an introduction to me as a young person to classical guitar music. And uh, it was very interesting to start to study this piece because you do realize how technical the piece is and how interesting the adaptation for that rock song is. But let's focus on this tune. So Brower incorporates a lot of the elements that we've learned previously into this piece. Uh, he, he incorporates a compound arpeggio in the right hand, and in fact there are two different compound arpeggios that are used in this piece. And he also utilizes chord progressions, chord changes, that use either common fingers or guide fingers. So there is always a trick to move from chord to chord, and I'm going to try and walk you through this. As with any of the Brower pieces, I strongly encourage you to buy the score. Um, these are fantastic pieces that will be in your library forever, and the investment is so small to have access to these pieces forever. Before we start with the chords, let's take a look at the right hand arpeggio pattern. This is a three part compound arpeggio. So what I want you to do is put your thumb on the fifth string, put index on the third string, M on the second string, and A on the first string. And we're going to break this arpeggio up into each quarter note beat. So the first quarter note goes P, A, M, I. A very straightforward arpeggio. P, A, M, I. And I would practice this, as we've practiced so many arpeggios, in repetition, keeping it very, very even. P, A, M, I. P, A, M, I. The next arpeggio, so again, we start with the A finger on the first string. A, M on the second string, I, and now P on the fourth string. So we have A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P. Lastly, we have A, which shifts to the second string. M that shifts to the third string, I that shifts to the fourth string, and thumb on the fifth string. A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P. So all three arpeggios. P, A, M, I, A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P. And if we do it in succession, we'll get two bass notes on the fifth string in, se in sequence. P, A, M, I, A, M, I, P, A, M, I. As I work through this arpeggio, I'm utilizing consecutive preparation. So when one finger plays, I'm immediately placing the next finger on the string that will play next. 
Again, this is this concept of playing fast at a slow speed. You're preparing in order to eventually be able to pick up the tempo. Once you have the arpeggio, we can now start to add the chords in the left hand. And what's nice is, each chord is repeated, so we play each chord twice. So let's immediately look at the first chord. We know that these are all going to be, all these notes are on different strings. So we don't have any situation where two notes are on one string. These are all arpeggios. So if we look at the notes, we have open A, open E, D sharp on the second string at the fourth fret, C sharp on the third string, sixth fret, and A on the fourth string at the seventh fret. So there's our chord shape. If we superimpose our arpeggio pattern over this, we get... And again, we play each chord twice. Once you have that, the next chord is very connected to this. We lift up our pinky, our first and third fingers are going to remain the same. We're going to place our second finger on the fourth string at the fifth fret on the note G. Again, we play it twice. Now, to get to the next chord, our second finger is going to be the guide. It is going to take us from the fifth fret to the fourth fret on that fourth string. You're then going to add your, your third finger on the second string on the fourth fret in D sharp, and your pinky on the third string at the fifth fret on C. Playing it twice. This next change, all fingers remain common. The entire chord just moves one fret lower in pitch. chord, our pinky is going to stay common. We're going to add E on the 4th string 2nd fret and C sharp on the 2nd string 2nd fret. So pinky allows us to make that change. To get to the next chord, pinky again is our common. We play C natural on the 2nd string 1st fret, and E on the 4th string with your 2nd finger. The next chord change is tricky, until you see the strategy to get there. We have to go from this shape to this shape. Now you'll notice that the shapes remain fairly similar. The pinky becomes the guide. So what we're going to do is, we play our chord, we move our pinky forward to the fifth fret. That puts your second finger in position to play G on the sixth string at the third fret, and it puts your first finger in position to play E on the fourth string at the second fret. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just that chord progression, just that change. That's a chord change I would practice in repetition, just going back and forth between those chords until it feels easy. Once we're here on that chord, the next chord is easy. Second finger on the G becomes our guide. It moves to F sharp. We add our third finger on the fourth string on E at the second fret, and our pinky on the third string at the second fret on A. So we have... The next change, F sharp with the second finger moves to F natural with your first finger. We keep pinky and we lift up third finger. The next chord, our pinky is common. We lift up F, it will go to open E, 
And we're going to put our third finger back down on E on the fourth string second fret. Third finger remains common. You're going to add your first finger on the third string first fret, G sharp. Beginning in measure 23, our arpeggio pattern subtly changes. We now have the arpeggio P A M I P A M I. So it's a repeating P A M I arpeggio. What's interesting is it changes strings in a very complex way. So we start out on strings 5, 1, 2, 3. Then we go 4, 2, 3, 4. So we have P, A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P, A, M, I, P, A, M, I. And again, in the left hand, we're going to repeat each chord twice. We have an interesting chord change from measure 22 to 23. We start out where we left off at the end of 22. next bass note is the open fifth string. That's going to provide us a, a second to move up the strings using the third finger as a guide along the fourth string. We were at the second fret of the fourth string. We are now going to go up to the fourth string at the twelfth fret. And our first finger that was on the third string at the first fret will now slide up to the third string at the tenth fret. So this change looks like this. slide back a fret on the 4th string using that 3rd finger to the 11th fret and add our pinky on the 3rd string 11th fret. Our pinky becomes a guide and slides back to the 7th fret of the 3rd string and we add our 1st finger at the 4th fret of the 4th string. Again. Our pinky will become a guide, going back to the 6th fret of the 3rd string, adding our 3rd finger on the 6th fret of the 4th string. We now have a repeating chord. We have 3rd fret of the 4th string, 3rd fret of the 2nd string, and pinky on the 4th fret of the 3rd string. We only play it once. The next chord is also a repeat, 4th string 2nd fret, 2nd string 2nd fret, pinky stays in position, and end with an opening. I like to retard through that last measure, really giving emphasis on that final A note as a resting place where the piece resolves. This is a piece that you can work on for years because we can take it as fast as our hands will allow us. It's very intricate, it's very interesting, the harmonies are very complex, people really enjoy listening to this piece, even though it is far from consonant. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe for all the updates, and I look forward to hearing your videos of you performing this piece.